Awesome. Hello, everybody. This is it's Tony Branner. I'm so excited to be here today. I, um, I live in Charlotte, North Carolina, and I love my job. I get to work with people all over the country uh, in schools and in corporations and at conferences. Absolutely um, love my job. And, so, and I have a dog, as you can hear. <laughs> so today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about plants. And they call me the crazy plant lady. And we're going to talk about the top 10 reasons to add more plants to your diet. And so I hope you'll enjoy this. Uh, I, let's see if my slides will work. Come on. There we go. Um, I'm part of a group called Health Made Simple, and it's a group of health professionals and moms and dads on a mission and entrepreneurs and business people. And the common denominator is that we all want to join together to turn our sick care health system um, around into a well care system and to really focus on prevention and help families find creative strategies for how they can help their family move in the direction of optimal health. So that is pretty, um, a pretty big you know, thing to do. Uh-oh, they're going crazy. Sorry, sorry. Hold on. Let's see if we can go backwards. I'm just gonna give my whole talk before me. Uh, this is a picture of my family, and my passion is that my kids and your kids and my neighbors and your neighbors and our communities won't experience the diseases I see in my clients. I work with amazing registered dietitians, amazing physicians physical therapists, personal trainers, and every week we get new people that come to us that have just been diagnosed with cancer and heart disease and diabetes and, and autoimmune diseases. And not only that, we're starting to get children who are being diagnosed at earlier and earlier ages, especially diseases that we never used to see in children. Absolutely crazy. And so that's why this is so important. So the first one we want to talk about, number 10, is something called systemic inflammation. Now, what does that mean? If you talk to the top researchers in the world, they will tell you that there's no such thing as different diseases, that they all start with inflammation within the cell. And then some people get more heart disease and some families have more diabetes and some more cancer. Um, so genetics does play a part in that as well as your environmental factors, how many toxins you're exposed to, your diet, all of that. Um, but it all starts in the cell. So what if we could nip it in the bud at the cellular level way before a tumor ever showed up, way before chest pain ever showed up. And I work with a lot of athletes and what cuts their career short? Inflammation, absolutely. So this is um, really a problem that all of us deal with, some more than others. And what we eat plays a huge part in reducing that inflammation. Number nine is your immune system. Well, some people have an immune system that's kind of excited. It's too revved up. So it's kind of a situation where your own body is attacking itself. Um, and then other people have the rock bottom immune system where they're catching every cold and flu and strep throat and mono. Uh, so what we want to do is bring it into balance. We want to bring it into the middle. And we do that with lifestyle changes. Uh, another issue we see with the immune system is the consumption of sugar. Uh, we know when people consume sugar that it depresses their immune system for four to six hours. And that's kind of crazy because some adults even, not just kids, they'll have their frappuccino in the morning and a couple donuts at the office and then a sweet tea if you're in the South or a soda if you're other places and then they might have a couple cookies in the afternoon to get through the, the evening. Um, and then by the time you know it, they've depressed their immune system all day long. So this is really a problem. And we have um, evidence that many people, even though they don't look malnourished, are actually showing signs of malnourishment. This little boy is getting plenty of calories, but not enough nutrition. And we call that phenomenon overfed 
and undernourished. And we actually see it in all different people. Some athletes are so inflamed and so overtrained, but you wouldn't know it. They look all buff and strong, uh, but they really are eating all the wrong foods and they can get away with it um, weight wise because they are working out so much, but that doesn't mean they're safe. Uh, so health can mean different things to different people. It can mean being fit. It can mean not getting sick. It can mean your kids don't miss school. It can mean having enough energy to have fun. Have you ever not had enough energy to have fun? That's kind of crazy. So it can mean different things for all of us. But the, the bottom line is our choices, our lifestyle choices are going to really determine how our immune system can help us. And we have a lot of control over that. This is kind of hopeful news. Number eight is um, the study of something called epigenetics. And sometimes people feel doomed. They say to me, Tony, I can't help it that my cholesterol is high. It just runs in my family. There's nothing I can do. Well, guess what? They found that even though you're born with a certain genetic material, you have a little switch on every one of your genes and you can turn on the good genes and turn off the bad genes, deactivate the bad genes with your lifestyle choices. So even the people with the worst breast cancer gene, the worst colon cancer genes, don't all get it. They took men who had prostate cancer and they put them on a plant-based diet had them go for a walk, had them do deep breathing and, and a little stress management counseling session. And in only three months, they turned off almost all 452 out of 500 genes that cause prostate cancer. Pretty cool, right? And so you have a lot of hope because you're not doomed with the stuff that runs in your family. Number seven is something called oxidative stress. And this was my research way back in graduate school in, at UNC Chapel Hill, and I was a professor there and director of the Wellness Center. And what we learned is that, of course, you have to breathe oxygen, but the very oxygen you breathe is what causes aging and disease. What? Kind of like a fire in the fireplace. It's warm, it's pretty, but what's left over are the ashes and the smoke. Well, in your body, the leftovers are called free radicals, and they're not people that lived in the 1960s. <laughs> they're actually little molecules that are unstable. They're missing an electron. So they run around your body trying to steal an electron from your healthy molecules. And once they do that, they are neutralized. They can't harm you anymore. So this is, you know, a real problem because as they run around your body, think of them like little hot BBs, they bump into stuff and steal that electron. They might damage the inside of your blood vessels. They might damage your proteins. That's what we see in athletes. Might damage your skin. That's wrinkling. It might damage your retina. That's leading to macular degeneration. The lens of your eye will lead to cataracts crazy, right? So if it damages your DNA, that's your genetic material. And that's called a mutation if that gets damaged. And that could actually lead to cancer. So we don't want this to happen. Um, the other visual to kind of help you remember what this is all about is if you cut open an apple, you obviously know what happens. But the same idea is happening to your cells. It can be very gradual, but what we're finding is the aging and disease process is being sped up because of our eating habits, because of our environment, because of our food supply. All of those things have been drastically altered. And so we're deteriorating at a faster pace. Oh no, that's not good. And when you exercise, you actually breathe more oxygen. And so we're particularly concerned about people who are training really intensely or more than an hour. And guess what? Our kids now, soccer practice used to be 30 minutes, and now it's going one hour, two hours, whole weekend tournaments, cheerleading. Um, a mom just called me yesterday. Her daughter goes four hours every night to cheerleading. Um, so we have to be concerned about this and make sure that our kids are protected. Other things do cause free radicals as well as breathing, smoking, drinking, doing your taxes, stress. Anybody have any stress in their life? Uh, X-ray, CT scans, pregnancy, you have surges of free radicals, flying in airplanes, you're co closer to the radiation of the sun. So they have some studies with airline attendants and pilots with more cancer 
I fly a lot, so that scares me. Um, and it affects every aspect of your physiology, your lungs, your heart, your skin, your kidneys, your joints, your brain, everything. Um, and so that's the scary news. The happy news is you can counteract oxidative stress, but you're going to need some superheroes. And your superheroes are called antioxidants. Well, a lot of people have heard that word before because there are bottles of them in you know, every store, but most people don't know what they do and where is the best place to get them. And that's why you're here today, because if you understand this, you basically understand nutrition. Some antioxidants um, are made in your own tissues, but most of them you have to eat and they only come in plant foods, fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, grains, beans, whole grains are better, right? Um, if the cow has some antioxidants, it's because he ate the grass. If the salmon has any antioxidants, it's because it ate algae, right? And guess what these antioxidants can do? This is incredible, I know I'm a nerd. Um, they have an extra electron that they can donate to the free radical and neutralize it, stop it in its tracks, before it causes harm in your body, before it, it turns into that little hot BB that's damaging all the cells in your body. And some antioxidants can actually repair DNA damage before the cell, cell starts to replicate into a cancer. So it's really incredible. So fruits and vegetables are your frontline defense against aging, oxidative stress, and degeneration. Wow. That's pretty simple. Your grandma could have probably told you that. And M&Ms and Skittles don't count. You have to get different colors. You have to eat the rainbow. What's in blueberries is different than sweet potatoes, is different than kale. You have to get all those different colors in your body every day. And nobody really knows yet how many servings you need because the food we're getting is not as nutritious as what our grandmothers got. So the government says nine to 13 servings a day or half your plate at every meal and every snack should be fruits and vegetables. We see double for athletes and they're still getting more um, protection from the protein damage. And then when people are chronically ill, sometimes we double or triple it and we still see benefits. So honestly, we don't really know how many servings are good but here's what we do know. The average person is eating one to three servings a day. It's very pitiful. <laughs> I just spoke at a high school and we actually surveyed them all and over half of them had zero the day before we did the survey. Zero servings and we even let them count orange juice. We didn't let them count, count french fries. Um, and what we're learning is that vitamins and isolated supplements like antioxidants that are made in a test tube don't work. They actually cause more harm than good because it's the synergy of the whole food that makes the difference. And so I don't want you to run out and buy a bottle of antioxidants because you were on this call today. Um, this, these are organizations that don't recommend antioxidant vitamins, the American Heart Association, the American Cancer Society, the American Academy of Family Physicians. But honestly, some doctors don't even know that this um, data exists. So they're still recommending multivitamins instead of whole food. Um, so that's a little crazy. You have to educate yourself. Number six is that our body loves to have a certain pH in order to stay healthy. And we call this the theory of alkaline versus acidic um, diet. And disease loves acidity. It's going to thrive and alkaline, alkalinity shuts it down. So if you look in that middle, you'll see the green zone. And the green zone is where you really need to be to stay alive. So let's say you eat a big piece of chicken or you have a donut or you drink a soda. Um, what happens is your body metabolizes it and it makes uric acid. And so that makes your bloodstream more acidic. And the only way you can pull yourself back into that green zone is to find something that's alkaline. So it could be some healthier food like eating your, your green salad. Um, but sometimes you're not eating enough alkaline food, and so it has to go get calcium from your bones, from your teeth, from what you just ate, and it'll even pull calcium from your muscles. Well, your muscles need that calcium to contract properly. So this is a really bad thing for athletes. It's going to hurt their power, and it's going to hurt their endurance. 
So an acidic diet is really scary um, because the body just starts to deteriorate. You see more stress fractures. You're going to see way more osteoporosis. Uh, so if you can keep most of your diet about 90% on that alkaline side, which guess which foods are alkaline? Fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, whole grains, beans. What have Americans stopped eating? Of course, all of those foods. And we've started eating more animal food and dairy food and processed food and adding 9,000 food additives to our food that our bodies don't even recognize. Um, we've taken all the fiber and the nutrients out of breads and rice and, and whole grains and put, made them completely white and stripped of their nutrition. Um, lemons and limes are actually alkaline in your body, even though they're acidic in your mouth. And the most alkaline foods are your green foods. Um, so you want to include as many of those a day as you can to really help push you over to that alkaline side. And green foods do so many things in your body. And with kids, this is one of the top ones that we're missing. Um, we're not getting enough green food into our kids. Number five is your microbiome. Believe it or not, you have trillions of little critters that live in you and on you. And um, some people have estimated five to seven pounds. You have more bacteria that live on you than you have cells in your body. They outnumber you. So it's pretty crazy. Um, 100 trillion microscopic life forms living in your human body. And um, so I thought this cartoon was funny. You call this living? And what we've learned is that your microbiome determines your metabolism and your immune system. And guess what? They eat before you eat because the food comes to them first. And if you're not feeding them the right food, then the wrong types of bacteria will push away and outgrow the good bacteria. And most Americans have a situation of what we call dysbiosis, where they have the wrong colony of bacteria in their body. They just did some studies on people who prepare raw chicken, and even if they're really careful about cleaning up, they found that the chicken microbes we're taking over the gut colony of the humans who were cleaning the raw chicken. Pretty crazy. Um, if you want that information, I can send it to you. Number four is plant versus animal protein. I think um, Americans especially have become proteinaholics. They think it, all of nutrition revolves around protein. And what's happened is they consume too much animal protein. And animal protein is very acidic in your body. And it also is a carcinogen. If it exceeds 10% of your calories, studies show that it allows cancer to initiate into the second stage. So um, plant protein doesn't do that. You can't overdose on plant protein. Uh, so people are really freaked out that there's, there's not a protein deficiency except in people who are so sick they can't eat or maybe the people who are eating the potato chip diet. But it's just a myth that you can't get enough protein from plants spinach is even half protein. Um, if you eat a variety of foods, you're going to get enough protein. If you're nervous about it, eat a few nuts every day, almond butter, um, rice milk, you know, you'll get everything that you need. And people are so focused on the paleo diet. And, and if you really look at the research on what paleolithic humans actually ate, first of all, they only lived to be 20 or 30 years old. So if your goal is to only live 20 or 30 years old, you might want to, um, <laughs> to do exactly what they did. Um, but their diet, when they looked at it, actually resembles more of a plant-based diet. And what was interesting is the fruits and vegetables way back then were, had hardly any sugar in them at all, and they had way more fiber. So the Paleolithic humans ate somewhere between 80 and 150 grams of fiber a day. The highest we ever see is like 45 a day, and those are our super healthy clients, right? And they only had meat about one in 19 meals. So the, the animal food that they ate was very lean and it was very small portions. So if you really want to eat the paleo diet, you should eat the way that I'm going to teach you today, which is a plant-based diet. 
You can also get plenty of protein from beans and soy foods that make sure they're organic and non-GMO. Quinoa is a complete protein. Um, and you can get that feel that you get with meat if you really get creative with, with some of your recipes. Number three, we're getting there. Number three is if you eat more plant foods, it replaces the harmful food. So you're not gonna eat as much meat and dairy and processed food. Um, and the, the toxic foods are the ones that we're especially concerned about. Will it be the mad cow beef, the hormone chicken, or the mercury fish? Eh, I'll go with the vegetarian dish, pesticide or hepatitis, right? And I love this one. Was it the microwave dream again? And so um, we've really changed our food supply. We've genetically modified it, we've radiated it, we've added all these you know, um, additives that we don't even know what they are. We don't know what they do in their, the body. They're called generally recognized as safe, but it's only the manufacturer who has to say that. There's no actual research that is required for that to be in a food. Finish your dessert, their children starving in China. Don't eat the whole cake, their children with diabetes in America. So we have diseases of affluence. We have too much food in our country. We need to focus on eating healthier food. Number two, I love this one. If you eat more plant food, you get to eat more food. And who wants to be hungry? Um, also, you stop the cravings or you greatly reduce the cravings because now you're giving your body all those thousands of antioxidants and live enzymes that it needs to do its job. And so it's gonna decrease those cravings. Also, you're going to get to eat more food before you feel, um, you're going to get to feel full before you overeat. So you have little stretch receptors in your stomach and those are gonna engage faster than if you're eating an oily food or a fatty food um, or a processed food. And number one is if you eat a plant-based diet, you can really be a part of saving the world. A plant-based diet to indirectly, you will consume nearly 600 gallons less of water, get this, per day. This blew me away. This is from National Geographic. And you'd save more water by not eating one pound of beef than not showering for six months. Wow. That one blew me away as well. The other statistic is if everyone just ate plant-based one day a week, that would be the equivalent of the whole country driving a Prius, right? Isn't that crazy? Um, and when you look at the research and you talk to the smartest people, if we just try to change our carbon footprint by doing more wind um, energy and solar energy, that's gonna take over a hundred years if we could get people to switch to a mostly plant-based diet, we could change the carbon footprint of our world in about five years. What? We could save the world by getting most people to eat more plant-based. Economically, this would also save the world because as you can see, as the green is the plant food consumption, as that goes up, right, disease goes down. So the amount we're spending on medical care is going to be almost reduced to negligible if we could get everyone eating a plant-based diet. That might take a little longer because there's a lot of damage that has to be overcome, but even people who already are sick, many of them can get well when we switch them to a plant-based diet. We were able to get a woman who had had type 2 diabetes for 30 years put her on a plant-based diet for two weeks, two weeks, and were able to get her off her medications. And she said, why didn't my doctor tell me about eating mostly plant food? And we went and asked her doctor. And her doctor said, because I knew she wouldn't do it, it's too hard to do it. Well, guess what? She said, so you mean I've been two weeks away from being cured for 30 years and no one told me the solution. So it's really up to each individual person what's hard. I personally think it's hard to have your chest cut open and open heart surgery or to be on medication or to spend your older years going to one doctor's appointment after another and not traveling and enjoying your grandchildren. Um, this is a um, chart that shows as you go from a mostly meat diet 
down to a completely plant-based diet, which is called vegan. You don't have to be vegan, but you have to get a lot closer. You can see that disease goes down. This one's for cataracts, but you can really show this for every known chronic disease. The chart looks the same. So it's, it's a continuum. So the better you do, the more you're saving yourself. So you can just do it gradually or you can do it all at once, but you have your high meat eaters, then your moderate meat eaters, then your low meat eaters, um, and then you have your fish eaters and then the, the dairy and egg people. Have you noticed that it would be better to do veggies and fish than veggies and dairy and eggs? Dairy and eggs are some of the most inflammatory foods that you can eat. So that kind of gives you an idea. So plant-based, I, I don't use the word vegan because if you say vegan, no one will invite you to dinner at their house ever again. Um, but plant-based is delicious. You get to eat so much food. There's so many resources. We just did a cooking class Wednesday night. Oh my gosh, people were so excited about how delicious the food was. And so our group Health Made Simple is trying to help you make this work in your family. And I'm sorry, I could not resist this cartoon. Um, I want to eat vegan, but I can't afford rice and vegetables. Um, it really has to be a priority. And what I do with my clients is I have them write a three-day food diary. And then we look for things that we can get rid of and replace with healthier options. So I wanted to end today with top 10 solutions. Now that I've given you the reasons why you need to eat more more plants and more fruits and vegetables. So here's my top 10 solutions. Number one is preparation. You have to prepare. You go to the store. If you just shove all those veggies in the drawer, they'll just go bad. Nobody will eat them. You've got to cut them, chop them, put them in clear containers, maybe roast a couple of trays of veggies so they're ready to throw in a salad or throw in a wrap or throw in a bowl that you make. Cup, um, cook a big cup, um, pot of quinoa or brown rice to have that ready for the whole week. Um, lots of things that you can do to prepare. Make it look pretty. Kids love compartments, so those little bento boxes, make it colorful, you know, anything you can do to help the presentation to make it, you know, really appealing to people. Take a cooking class, watch some of the online videos, get some new ideas, and, and carve out that time. Most of us don't have time, but, you know, most of these meals that I cook are 15 minutes, and that is so worth it. Your health is so worth it. Substitutions are cool because you get the same feel. Um, for example, maybe you, you know, like a lot of cheese on your salad. Maybe you like cheese on your sandwiches. Maybe you could try more hummus or more guacamole, or I put um, but, um, um, yeast, nutritional yeast on my salad and on my um, popcorn. And it gives that cheesy flavor, but without the actual dairy inflammatory um, issues with dairy. Deception is okay. Grind up your spinach and your zucchini, hide it in the spaghetti sauce. I'm going to show you some smoothie um, ideas. Find out which restaurants buy vegetables from local farmers because those are probably going to be more nutritious and they haven't been on a truck for two weeks being shipped here. They were grown, you know, probably within a hundred miles. Uh, farmers markets are a great option as well. Learn where yours are, learn which ones are true local farmers markets some of them cheat and they're just basically like grocery stores and then you could grow it yourself this is me when i was three years old you would think i would have become a great gardener but no i can kill a silk plant dead as a doornail but i care where my food comes from um, this is a school garden that i was in, um, helped help get installed this is the garden at our urban crisis ministry in Charlotte, and we're actually starting job training programs in, in sustainable gardening so that the residents there can learn and actually get employment. This is a friend of mine in Florida who grows um, organic, non-GMO produce. She has the capacity to feed 100 homeless families a week with fresh, organic produce. And this is called the Tower Garden, and this is... Um, something that I was skeptical about about five years ago, but I now grow all my own fruits and veggies in my backyard. I just went out a minute ago and cut it into my salad bowl, kale, spinach, all my own herbs, lettuce, tomatoes. 
Um, these are the two that I have out by my pool. And so this is a, this pays for itself in the first planting. And if your kids taste vine ripen, they're much more likely to be, you know, wanting to eat those foods and to be, um, know that they participated in the growing of it. The other one that you can use to get more colors and different varieties into your family are juicing. Now juicing is a little bit of a problem because the sugar stays in and the fiber goes out. So I'm not as big a fan of juicing unless you're just gonna juice vegetables. I'd rather you eat your fruits. Um, plus it's messy and expensive and time consuming. It can cost 30 to $40 a day to juice as many colors as you need. That can get quite expensive. Blended juicing is better because it's a smoothie and the fiber stays in. Um, so you're going to use a variety of um, plant milks or water or coconut water and then everyone wants to put in a protein powder. Well here's a real tip. People don't need any more protein. What they need are plant foods. They need superfoods. So I use Juice Plus Complete in our smoothies. I've used this for 22 years now and um, they redid the formula five years ago in conjunction with MD Anderson Cancer Center. They're using this with stage two to stage four ovarian cancer patients. But now you're getting 10 superfoods, five non-GMO plant proteins, so all 22 amino acids that you need, ancient sprouted grains, pumpkin, pomegranate, spirulina, yuca, things that you don't normally get in um, a protein powder. And the Olympic guidelines for when you work out or when your kids are playing sports are that within 30 minutes of their workout, they need to replace their glycogen. Well, a lot of these athletes are doing pure protein powder. Well, the guidelines are 80% carb, 20% protein. Otherwise, your body is acidic, more inflamed. So the Juice Plus Complete is that perfect combination. You're getting those amazing carbs from pumpkin and pomegranate and all those thousands of antioxidants, and you're still getting all the protein that you need. This is the only plant-based protein powder on the market that has a perfect score for protein digestibility. And so you don't want to do whey protein, you don't want to do casein, those are animal proteins and they're very acidic in your body. Also, you can prepare ahead of time so you can make that smoothie in two minutes, send your family out the door with 10 to 20 superfoods in their body. That alone, making the smoothie can change a family's life, can really change their health picture. So if you don't have a good recipe, um, ask the person who invited you and we'll shoot you a whole book of recipes on how to make a healthy smoothie. The last solution, um, and I found this 22 years ago, is called a whole food concentrate. And this is the simplest and most affordable thing that I've ever found to make sure that my clients and my family get every color in their body every day every color and the thousands of antioxidants that are in each color. So this is called Juice Plus Complete. There are some copycats out there, but none of them have published research. None of them have the quality control that this product has. Um, and believe me, I've visited the factory, I've studied it, um, every single published research. Um, so the red one is the orchard and it's all your fruits and the garden are the green ones and those are all your veggies and the vineyard is super cool because we see people's allergies and asthma and circulation, all of that and we see improvements with those. So it's 30 different superfoods. So if my clients do this and they also do one smoothie a day, they're getting 40 different varieties of plant foods in their body. And I've been tracking their blood work and tr tracking their results for 15 years. That's why I'm so confident to recommend this. It also comes in chewies, and these aren't just for kids. Some of our adults like the chewies because it curbs their sweet tooth. Um, so with most of our cancer patients, we do use the capsules because there's no carbohydrate at all, and sugar can, um, cancer can only thrive with sugar as its fuel. 
Um, but this has very little carbohydrate. It has, um, it comes from tapioca. So it's the equivalent of having a glass of juice every two or three weeks. It's not a lot. And this is how old my kids were when I found Juice Plus. And Jenna had eczema on the inside of her arms and she had really bad ear infections. My son would only eat white foods that didn't touch each other. So we um, were so grateful to find this because within about four to six weeks and, um, and for me about four months, my allergies went away, my asthma went away, um, my eyes would just water all the time. My husband is a physician and he was super skeptical, but then he started taking it when he got the flu and none of us did and started recommending it to his patients. Uh, and that, there they are today. My son, who would only eat the white foods, now actually is a personal trainer. My daughter's a health coach. Um, so they really eat everything now, every fruit or vegetable. They, they're, um, you know, it really does work. It's called metabolic programming. You get the healthy food into your body and you start craving those same foods, kind of like breastfeeding. Uh, and so the reason that I can recommend Juice Plus so strongly is because it has a food label. It's not a supplement. It's regulated as a food by the FDA. It has the quality control that is way beyond what's um, expected in the United States. It follows European and Australian guidelines. You check for fungus, salmonella, E. coli, guaranteed no pesticides, no herbicides, tested for all banned substances that athletes can't have in their body. You may have a child who has potential to have a college scholarship with sports. You have to be super, super careful what you allow them to put in their body because many supplements are contaminated and they can get a positive test um, on a urinalysis. So, um, we know that when you can get Juice Plus into the body, it serves as a catalyst, but also all by itself, even if you don't change your diet, you're going to see reductions in inflammation in about two weeks. You're going to see um, that your DNA damage and your free radical damage is reduced 66% in old people. 44% in young people. If a drug could do just 2%, it would get approved. Dehydrated fruits and vegetables, people, it's crazy. You just get them into your body and your body starts to do its thing. It's absolutely amazing. It's been studied on cancer patients at MD Anderson, clinically tested in children. If you take Juice Plus, your child is free for four years. Um, so they have a million kids taking Juice Plus for free. You have to be recommended for this study, but um, we can help you get recommended for it. The healthiest part of a donut is the whole. Unfortunately, you have to eat through the rest of the donut to get there. I hope that you've learned a lot today and you're gonna remember that cartoon, the hole in the donut, and that's how you're going to remember whole food nutrition. We can't cheat anymore by taking just vitamin C or just vitamin E. We have to get it in the synergy that it's in the whole food. 10,000 antioxidants in one little apple. And that is for disease prevention, but it's also so you can be the best you can be and your children can be the best they can be at what they do. And it's also for protecting your cells. And you can't feel that. It's kind of like brushing your teeth. You don't feel you're not getting a cavity, but you still brush your teeth. Eating more plants is like brushing your cells. You have to do it. You can't mess around. Something bad will happen eventually if you don't eat enough plant foods. And it'll be different in every person. We can't predict that. So your body is a Ferrari. You can't fill it with muddy water and expect it to do its job. We're very familiar with the gas in our body. It's the protein, carbohydrates, and fats. That's been beat into the ground. We don't need to talk about that anymore. People are getting plenty. But what we're missing is the oil in our car, the micronutrition. Avocados can actually go both places. So now your veggies and your fruits and your beans and your nuts and your seeds and your avocado and your quinoa and your brown rice and your sweet potatoes are the main part of your diet. And the animal foods are gonna be tiny condiment portions. And you need to make sure those are clean. That's your first priority. No antibiotics, steroids, growth hormone. If you're drinking milk that's not organic, um, uh, lots of bad things can happen, but one thing is those antibiotics are killing off your good gut bacteria every single time you're consuming them, 
right? So avoid antibiotics at all costs unless you're practically dying. Do not take antibiotics because it can take like three years to build back your gut biome. And make sure that your animal foods you're eating are clean. That's so important. Even if you can't get organic vegetables, eat them anyway. Some of us live in places where it's difficult. Um, be creative, make cookies out of apples. These are little balls made out of the Juice Plus Complete and oatmeal and healthy um, almond butter. And you could take these to the school instead of cupcakes. You could keep them in your freezer for a snack when um, you're out of everything else. So be creative. As moms, we have to really put this energy and effort into our family's health and wellness. And so these are my little babies, all grown up. I have the same picture from when they were little. Um, but today, um, I want you to act. I want you to make a decision. And the A stands for alter your perspective. I hope I've done that today to get you thinking about nutrition a little bit differently than the old school four food groups. Um, and maybe you can change a habit, even if it just starts with you and then eventually you trickle it down to your family. And that could truly transform your destiny. And I say that with full confidence because I've seen people get well just by eating a plant-based diet and drinking more water and going for a walk. Simple, simple changes. And I am part of an amazing community called Health Made Simple. We have people from all walks of life. They all do their own thing. But the common denominator is that we want to change this. We want to change the world. And we need more moms. We need more moms and dads. I call them moms on a mission to help us with this. It could be just spreading the word at a carpool. It could be hosting an event with your Girl Scout troop or your soccer team. It could be maybe coming on board to do workshops or cooking classes or help us plan them. It could be actually coming on board and working with us, owning your own Juice Plus franchise, helping install tower gardens and schools and helping them get the curriculums. Um, but I make a six-figure income just with my Juice Plus franchise, and I have full benefits with that company. It's an amazing home-based business for people who want to make a difference. And I didn't sign up to do it to make money. I signed up to do it because it had helped my family for eight years, and I felt bad to not share it. Two of my best friends were diagnosed with breast cancer on the same really week in the same month. And I went to have lunch with them and I was sharing with them how we eat a plant-based diet and we do juice plus and how much healthier my family has been. And they said, you've known about this for eight years and we've even been to your workshops and we even have your resource list and you didn't share it with us. That's so unethical. People need simple solutions and juice plus and the juice plus smoothie and the tower garden are simple, affordable solutions for families. That company only makes four products. It's not a whole catalog of stuff that you might believe in a few things, but not the rest of it. There's no quotas, there's no inventory you have to sell. It's just pure energy and passion for helping people. Some of the moms on our team just wanna make an extra 500 a month to pay for their child's gymnastics. Others decide they want it to be a full-time income to really help their family, um, but your paycheck in this company is a direct reflection of how many people you've helped. And you can do the business in stolen moments. I kept all three of my other companies. I still have my speaking business. I travel all around the country working with businesses and hospitals and doctors. I still have my publishing company. I still work at a big um, aquatic center as the fitness director. And I'm able to still run my virtual franchise in stolen moments and make that full-time income. And my husband is now on my benefits. So no pressure at all. Uh, we'd love to have you on board, even just to come to one of our events. But if you wanna learn more about working with Health Made Simple, we do things differently. We don't operate from selling, we operate from sharing and mission. Um, and the, the last thing that I'll tell you about is the company, is um, the Juice Plus company has been around 45 years. They give back, they're the main sponsor of St. Jude's Marathon. 
They um, are giving away 10 million plant-based meals over the next five years, 4,000 tower gardens to boys and girls clubs. They just spent $100,000 just to develop a curriculum to go along with that for schools and boys and girls clubs. And it's, um, it's really designed to be a virtual franchise. So you do own your own franchise. You can will it to your kids one day. You can sell it back to your company to the company, you can operate in all 50 states. So if you move, you take your franchise with you. Um, also in 32 countries, you can ship to anywhere in the world except Somalia and North Korea, go figure. Uh, so it's an amazing company and there is some inaccurate information online. So you have to be careful, make sure that you're getting the accurate information. There's some bloggers, that work for other supplements and work for the pharmaceutical industry that publish stuff that, you know, the Juice Plus company is a scam and it's multi-level marketing and it's a pyramid scheme and all of that. And it's absolutely not. I've been involved for 22 years. We had our attorneys actually check into the company before we purchased our franchise. It's only $50 a year to own a franchise. So some people are, are skeptical of that, um, but the, there's no limit on income. You can do it as a hobby or you can do it full time and help so many people. So thank you for being on today. I am going to end this recording, but if anyone um, has a question or would like to um, you know, talk to me, my email is just tonybranner at tonybranner.com. And I'm happy to answer your questions. I'm happy to help customize what we're doing for you. So maybe you don't ever want to speak in front of a group, but you would like to help us plan events. Or maybe you would love to be a communicator and an educator, and we can help you with that too. On Sunday, we have a call for people who want to be health coaches and to give them some guidance on how to, to make that happen. So lots of ways you can get involved. Thank you so very much for being here. And let me end.